Hello and welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. I'm Ayo DG. Makindi. President Muhammad Buhari has granted audience to the Progressives Governors Forum in furtherance of strategic engagement with critical stakeholders towards ensuring that the governing party retains power for sustainable future of the country. State House Correspondent Adamu Sambo reports. The governors are meeting President Muhammad Buhari for the first time since the successful conduct of the special convention and presidential election of the governing APC. They are here to express formal appreciation to the president for the leadership he provided that led to the widely acclaimed free, fair and transparent exercise that produced Ashiwa Jubola Ahmetibu as presidential candidate. Discussions centered on the best way forward towards achieving a successful outcome in the forthcoming equity and Oshun governorship elections as well as the 2023 general elections peacefully and transparently. Gov. Hope Ozadima of Imo State, who attended the meeting, was later granted audience by the president, where each of governors dominated discussions. As you were aware, last time I came here with a letter of invite to Mr. President to invite him to come to Imo State on a walking tour. And during that uh, visit, he will be commissioning were it to allow a newly realized highway and the were it to Okigwe. And by the grace of God, he reconstructed the State House of Assembly, fully equipped and furnished. And uh, I'm here to dot the I's and cross the T's as to when exactly uh, he will be coming. The governor who also appreciated the role played by the Nigerian leader at the just concluded presidential primary election of the party expressed the conviction that with the giant strides achieved by the Buhari presidency in critical economic sectors, the chances of the governing APC to return power are very bright. The next thing as party leaders now and the opinion leaders is for us to rise up, mobilize the polity and get members of our party committing to a successful election by 2023 so that um, our president that is living will also be handing over to our own president of APC. That is our preoccupation now, how to win the elections. We are ready to go and work for our candidate and produce the next president to deliver democratic dividends, develop Nigeria to look like other parts of the Western world where democracy is working. On the issue of running mate for the presidential candidate of the party, the Imo State Governor said that is the prerogative of Ashiwa Jubola Ahmed Tinubu, whom he believes will do the right thing in the best interest of the governing APC. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. The Nigerian Senate has convened and said it will continue to update existing laws, including the new Electoral Act, President of the Senate, Ahmad Lawan, stated this when he welcomed his colleagues from five weeks' recess. He also urged senators to continue to give due and desirable attention towards finding lasting solutions to Nigeria's security challenges. As a parliament, we still have issues that require our legislative intervention. The security of our country still needs our attention. But the Electoral Act itself, even though a good document, it's not a perfect document. So it needs some refinement from time to time to improve our electoral process. 
Meanwhile, President of the Senate, Ahmad Lawan, has announced the defection of two senators from Kebbi State. Senate leader Abdullahi Yahaya and Adamo Aliero from the Old Progressives Congress Party, APC, to the People's Democratic Party, PDP, citing absence of internal democracy in the party as reason. Senator Yahaya also resigned as majority leader of the Senate. In another development, the outcomes of the just concluded party primaries and fostering robust women inclusiveness in politics were points of emphasis by the Speaker, House of Representatives, Femi Bajabiamila, as he addressed plenary. It was the first sitting after the party primaries for the 2023 general elections. National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali reports. The House members are meeting for the first time in chamber after political parties' primaries, an exercise that proved a litmus test for the amended Election Act 2022. The Speaker, in his welcome address, touched the heart of the matter. Many fell on the wayside as they failed in their bid for re election in the run up to the 2023 general elections. When we fought for direct primaries in this House, we knew exactly what we were saying. It is rather unfortunate that the process went the way it went. The loss really is not for members who lost. It's a loss to democracy, to the institution, and to the country. The address was reassuring for women who are waiting in anticipation as the House prepares again to vote on the gender-related bills as the lawmakers consider the next batch of the Constitution Amendment bills. Speaker uh, has... Uh alluded to the fact that we are going to revisit those uh, issues related to gender that were not passed uh, with a view to uh, getting them passed because uh, some members did not get adequate information on, 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 on those issues. Well, consideration of items slated on the order paper was suspended as the House adjourns plenary to Wednesday, 15th June, in honor of the late House member Basi Epenyon, who died on the 23rd of April 2022 from the National Assembly. Lami Ali, NTA News. Still talking politics, it's few days to the deadline given to the political parties by Independent National Electoral Commission to submit names of their candidates ahead of the 2023 general elections. To this end, various interest groups within the APC are appealing to stakeholders to consider merits and those with electoral value to emerge as running mates to its presidential candidates, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. This the group said is necessary in view of increasing divergent opinions from stakeholders. Nigeria is in dire need of good governance, and this can come from either a Muslim leader or a Christian leader. But in the spirit of nationalism, justice, fairness, and unity, which the Northern governors demonstrated a few days ago, the leaders of the North, on whose shoulder the emergence of the vice presidential candidate rests, must also demonstrate this spirit by ensuring that the candidate comes from, from the Christian faith. The Northern APC has in its fold capable individuals from the Christian faith. Appreciating our party loyal members, especially from the northwest and north central zones, we are appealing for their special consideration of the northeast zone for the position of vice president candidate of all progressive congress in the 2023 general election. The northeast region had consistently given block vote to the APC and support candidate from the other regions. Now, a social cultural organization known as Ejo Youth Council Worldwide has appealed to the National Working Committee of the Governing All Progressives Congress to consider the choice of Dr. Ibrahim Bello Dauda Eldabi as running mate for the party's presidential candidate, Senator Bola Ahmed Tinubu. The council says Dr. Eldabi has the physical and mental capacity to key into APC's consolidation efforts in line with the blueprint of its presidential candidates. Abubakar Akwanga reports. It is exactly a week that the APC presidential primary held with Senator Bola Tinubu from the southwest 
emerged as a standard bearer for 2023 general election. Now, the Joy Youth Council is conversing for the vice presidential ticket to go to the northeast with Dr. Ibrahim Ludoda El Debi as its preferred choice for the second highest seat in the country. Dr. Ibrahim Belutauda, who is from Borno State, a fine Nigerian, a dechabalized Nigerian, a man who believes in the Nigerian project and who has also shown his commitment to the Niger Delta project. The council says Dr. El Debi has remained a frontline political figure, a loyal party man, and the true patriot the party needs to pair with its standard bearer for transformative leadership in 2023. Ijo Youth Council condemns the unprovoked killings of worshippers in Owo, Ondo State, and other parts of the country and appeals to security agencies to take the war to the enclaves of perpetrators. Abubakar Akwanga, NTA News. Democracy in Nigeria has been described as a work in progress, conflicted by institutional and human challenges. This was part of discussion on the promise of democracy in Nigeria, 23 years on. Ekemeni Williams has the details. Is a complete adult, mm -hmm. and so we've come to the point where we need to stop talking about a nascent democracy when, when you know Nigeria is no longer a child. Look at me now, I'm going golden airs. The discussions used the analogy of an individual's growth from infancy to adulthood to illustrate the trajectory of the nation's contemporary democratic evolution. The belief that the country has now reached a critical point in this evolution which requires substantial intervention. Uh, one can say that yes, there are some level of uh, progress, uh, but then when you create additional universities, unlike Dr. Akana said, uh, students are at home for the fourth month. I mean, uh, you, you are making progress, but then you are bringing, drawing yourself back. It is the same thing we were talking prior to the inception of, uh, to the restoration of democracy that we are still talking about now. They acknowledged the gains that have been made in the areas of technology, investment policies, and legislations, but noted the relatively low progression in involving young people in the governance process, among other challenges. When you look at Nigeria today, we are almost a country of edicts and decrees. Sometimes you listen to what you hear in the media, and you almost feel like in a military dictatorship, because you hear, I have directed, I have done this, I have done that. Where is the consultation? So when we talk about you know the an investment when we talk about the the fact that you know nigerians haven't fully bought in why will i buy into it as a woman my very very fervent appeal to those in charge is that please they should take notes that we are entrusting to them the resources of our country they called on voters to use their pvc wisely during the forthcoming general elections in abuja Kevin Williams, NTA News. In view of the forthcoming 2023 general elections, the Nigerian army is to review its rules of engagement and code of conduct during security operations. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa reports that the chief of army staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahaya, gave the order at the 2022 second quarter chief of army staff conference in Abuja. Chino Achebe, in his famous teens fall apart, says, Since men have learned to shoot without missing, birds have also learned to fly without pitching. It is in similar vein that these army principal officers, heads of the units and formations, converge on Abuja for the 2022 second quarter conference of the chief of army staff to appraise and re-strategize its operational tactics. This is necessary in view of the dynamism and complex nature of the nation's emerging security threats. The holding of this conference is timely as we look forward to conduct a holistic appraisal of our engagements in the first half of the year and develop strategies to consolidate on our achievements in the months ahead, particularly in the provision of security support to facilitate the peaceful conduct of electionarian activities for the 2023 general elections. With ongoing internal security operations in virtually all the nation's political zones, the Chief of Army staff ordered the immediate review of its rules of engagement before the forthcoming elections. 
It is usual for the military to review its rules of engagement and conduct other operations in tune with developing situations and developing activities in order to ensure through our support to civil authority uh, free and fair elections. A locally produced armored personnel carrier with surveillance and night vision capacity up to 20 kilometers was on display at the conference. In Abuja, Ismail Musa, NTNews. The All Progressives Congress Party, APC, has organized a major rally asking the people of Ekiti State to keep faith with the election mandates given to the party during the Saturday 16th Ekiti State governorship election. The presidential candidate of the APC, Ashuaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu, and other political heavyweights who spoke said APC remains the party to make Nigeria a better place. They explained that the party is working to make Nigeria's dream a reality. He has kept a word which spoke about it and back on a journey of unity, stability, and progress. Our leader, the voice of the voiceless, the defender of the defenseless. Highlights of the campaign was the presentation of the governorship candidate, Biodun Oyebanji. The Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, says it will continue to promote key programs aimed at saving lives and unifying the citizenry. This came to the fore when the United Nigeria Project visited the NTA headquarters, Abuja, to discuss the need to sensitize Nigerians on peaceful coexistence. Abdul Malik Hassan reports. This exchange of gifts signaled a sustained partnership between the United Nigeria Project and the NTA. It is a call for unity from these civil actors engaging the entertainment industry to project peace and unity while redefining the face of Nigeria overseas. So NTA is chosen as a key partner for this quest. We wish to request for the following. What that NTA shall work with us on this campaign as an official media supporting partner the project two that we shall be allowed to use nta logo and name in all our subsequent documents as an official supporting partner to the project three that special slot of airtime at different programs platform shall be provided for united nigeria project team to share with nigerian citizens occasionally the vision and objective of the project whatever it is that promotes the well-being of the Nigerian project is what we stand for. We have listened carefully to the speech you made. We will take time to look at it in detail so as to go and we work out areas of engagement. So many requests and modalities to be worked out in black and white. Hopefully, the aim is achieved. Abdul Malik Hassan, NTA News. A federal high court sitting in Abuja has convicted and sentenced to two years in prison two co defendants in a suit filed by the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, against suspended Deputy Commissioner of Police, Abakiari, over an alleged drug deal. The presiding judge, Justice Emeka Nwite, in delivering the judgment said, having admitted to have committed the offense, preferred against them in counts number 5, 6 and 7 by the NDLEA, Chibuna Umeibe and Emeka Ezewane, who are 6th and 7th defendants, are hereby convicted accordingly. End of quotes. Justice Nwite thereafter sentenced them to two years imprisonment, each on counts 5, 6 and 7. It said the terms which shall run concurrently would commence from the day the defendants were arrested by the NDLEA. The convicts are two drug traffickers arrested at the Akano Ibiam International Airport in Enugu by the Nigeria police and handed over to the NDLEA. Let's join Adeola in our Lagos Network Center for more on Nationwide. Good evening, Adeola. It's over to you. 
in Ayo. Thank you. The world is celebrating blood donors today, a way of appreciating them and creating awareness on the need for regular and paid blood donations. The slogan is Give Blood and Keep the World Beaten. Kindia Debisi tells us more on the day. <laughs> Disasters and life-threatening situations oftentimes leave many victims in desperate need of blood. We need blood for them. As many people that are within the hospital environment, we come and please assist. Just like this call, many others are hanging on to life with hope that they would be rescued by acts of kindness by blood donors. Situations like these accentuate the need for more parity to be given to blood banks and donations. And I've never donated blood because I have low iron and I feel people should donate blood because of pregnant women in the hospitals and also people who have low blood too. Concerning blood donation, I've done that I think uh, about five years ago when uh, one of my friends, the wife, uh, the neighbor. I have the opportunity to donate my blood. I will. Data by the World Health Organization shows that Nigeria needs an average of 1.8 million pints of blood annually to keep the health of our people safe and sound. There is hope of life for someone in your blood donation is an adage that cannot be denied. Blood donation is uh, very important. It's very important because uh, it's universal. Uh, usually a universal demand for blood. Unfortunately, uh, the, uh, the supply has been a major challenge globally. And it is because um, uh, some air challenges which are uh, in different climes require uh, donation. So if the person is bleeding quite seriously, it's easy to bleed out. Uh, and that means that the body organs in a short while might be dying, you know, uh, because they're not getting the supply of blood, which really carries oxygen to keep all of the body cells and organs working optimally. Blood donors are considered to be heroes because they pass on blood, which is life and life saving. There shouldn't be a need for an urgent call for people to come to donate. And we know when urgent call comes like that, if one is not able to meet up to the call on time, the life that is at risk of uh, applications might actually not wait for that kind of intervention. So it is very, very important that we have enough pool of blood in the bank for patients to be able to use when there is a need for it. The blood of blood can create a notion of happiness, but it is only human to put smiles on the faces, and you can do that by becoming a blood donor. In Lagos, Ken Day at ABC and G News. Now the United States Embassy in Nigeria has inaugurated holding play and education space to support general learning, particularly in the area of boosting intellectual and cross-cultural capacity between Nigeria and the U.S., Michael Olaleye reports that the facility cited within the premises of a national museum will help children and young people connect with historical artifacts. Being an historical eco space which connects man to cultural heritage and monumental artifacts, a museum does not just serve the purpose of exhibition. In fact, there are more learning motives connected to visitation. The National Museum in Lagos averagely hosts 75,000 children and young people annually. And before now, there has been a major constraint relating to availability of relaxation sports to complement the entire learning process. From the inscriptions to the drawings on the wall, the entire space gives satisfaction of a modern playground, a type of ambience emphasized by the U.S. Embassy in Nigeria, which necessitated the commitment of resources from its public diplomacy fund. These preservation projects benefit both future generations and the growth of the tourism industry. I am proud to say that since the program's inception, Nigeria has received 10 ambassador fund for cultural preservation grants worth a million dollars to the national commission for museums and monuments this gesture is a plus to its quest of upgrading galleries to international standards in which it have been completed across the country and another night on the radar for upscaling the eyes on the cake however is that more global interventions are coming on board to support this initiative but also recently we won a grant uh, on the, by the Bank of America 
Art Conservation Fund to the value of $40,000 to restore and conserve the Uku bronzes at the National Museum Lagos. When did they come in? They go into the galleries first. After they experience their education in the gallery, they come for their recreational time in the play on the playground. The whole idea of the modern play and education space was influenced by Olamide Babajide, when in 2017, she was selected as one of the top 10 tech women by the U.S. And her dream of Green Park, where people can sit and relax with an of educational purpose. In Lagos, Michael Olaleye, NT News. A good one there, Michael. Now do not forget to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash all live and on our other social media handles displayed on your screen for updates. We'll pause here for a break. Nationwide continues with Jenny in Port Hackett when we return. To stay with us. <laughs> And welcome to Port Harcourt. The need to encourage regular blood donation to enable speedy access for emergency cases, especially women suffering from blood suffering from bleeding associated with pregnancy and accident victims, has been emphasized as the World March 2022 Blood Donor Day. Ijomo Gweke reports that the theme of this year's celebration is. An act of solidarity, join the efforts and save lives. According to World Health Organization, every day women lose blood and die from complications arising from childbirth. Children also suffer severe anemia due to malaria and malnutrition. Patients with blood and bone marrow disorder lose their lives due to blood shortages in most hospitals' blood banks, especially in low- and middle-income countries. World Blood Donor Day, established in 2004 by WHO, is aimed at raising awareness on the need for blood donation to save lives. Hence, individuals and voluntary blood donors reinforce programs on this day. <laughs> In saving a life, one pint. So, donate a pint of blood today. Happy blood donation. Medical expert says donating blood is essential for saving lives and offers area of physical and mental health benefits to the donor, as it is done once in every three months. Blood donation is a life-saving package, and blood donation itself. Is also a helping tip, a random principle to help situation. Celebrated annually on June 14, the day is marked to support national blood transfusion services in Port Harcourt, Ijo Mugweke, and News. Insecurity in Nigeria is an issue of great concern to all well meaning citizens who continue to wonder how the country arrived at such unfortunate situation where no one is saved as the problem continues to escalate daily. It is the NNPP presidential candidate Rabi Musa Kwankuzo noted while interacting with party stalwarts during his affirmation as the NNPP presidential standard bearer at the just concluded party primaries. Aritlem reports. Flanked by supporters, the presidential candidate and former governor of Kano State, who says he is aware of the country's challenges, but with his years of experience in holding public offices in Nigeria, he will have on a nine-point agenda that will improve Nigerians' livelihood if elected as the president of Nigeria in 2023. So, I think the main problem we have in this country is wastage corruption, all sorts of things. For all what I have done in Kano, I never borrowed one couple from anybody. What you need is somebody who is selfless, somebody who would stand and make sure that the resources are kept for the purposes they, uh, they are there. The state party chairman, Tony Ode, recounted the strides regarded by the party candidate when he was the Kano state governor and lauded his numerous achievements in moving the party forward. Well, I 
The presidential candidate was accompanied by the stakeholders of the party. Among them is Buba Gadima, who is the secretary of the NNPP Board of Trustees in Calabar, Cecilia Julius, NTA News. And that's it from Port Harcourt Nationwide continues with Ayo in Abuja. Thanks, Jenny, in our Port Harcourt Network Center. Hope is on the horizon for women and children who cannot afford advanced health care services at Nigerian Navy Officers Wives Association, Pioneers Green Smart Hospital in Galadimawa District of the Federal Capital Territory. While laying the foundation for the 200 bed facility, Mrs. Aisha Buhari hailed the initiative as an act of service which is expected to transform the lives of Nigerians. Defense correspondent Nadja Atsu Tijani reports. Laying the foundation for what is expected to be a state-of-the-art health facility, the First Lady of Nigeria's representative, Mrs. Dolly or Shimbajo signals the start of a series of advanced health interventions for women and children initiated by the Nigerian Navy Officers Wives Association, NOAA, led by its president, Haji Anana Aisha Gambo. Sadly, about 262,000 babies die at birth in Nigeria. This is the core reason why we NOAA members decided to take our destinies and those of future generations into consideration. With Nigeria's First Lady Aisha Buhari calling the initiative a service to humanity in a message delivered by Mrs. Oshimbajo. Abuja, I'm particularly pleased to be conferred with the honor to perform this all important task for two main reasons as a woman and as a mother. This enables me to appreciate the enormity of the challenge this hospital seeks to address. Construction of the green facility, which is expected to have 1.5 million megawatts of solar energy for 24-hour service, will commence on two hectares of land provided by the Federal Capital Territory. The project is also being supported by the Defense and Police Officers Wives Association, as well as the Chief of the Naval Staff and other donors. Naja Atitijani, NTA News. To reduce the burden of HIV AIDS in Nigeria, religious organizations are strengthening advocacy from the pulpit to meet the 95 95. 95 suppression targets before 2030. Elizabeth Omori was at a consultative meeting on HIV AIDS treatment at Herons, where religious leaders and actors in the fight against the epidemic pledged their commitment. The virus that causes AIDS is one of the world's most serious health and development challenges. Globally, 38 million people are currently living with HIV Tens of millions of people have died of AIDS-related causes since the emergence of the epidemic. The growing prevalence in Nigeria informed this meeting by the Christian Council of Nigeria and World Council of Churches to strike the balance between faith and the reality of the disease. Let us adhere to our treatment in HIV. By the grace of God, let us go to our pulpit and tell people taking medicines to the glory of God. By the grace of God, let us take tablets to our pastors and tell the people, look at one great thing God has done, that we have medication for illnesses. Lack of access to treatments and victimization are some of the factors driving spiking number. I'm happy to inform us today that in Nigeria we have 1.7 million Nigerians on HIV treatment as of the end of 2021. Treatment adherence today is the main thing because treatment is considered as prevention. And once a person is identified, point on treatment, achieve virus suppression, he can no longer transmit HIV to another person. Fast tracking the AIDS response in order to meet the target before 2030, they say require additional investment and concerted efforts for positive outcome. In Abuja, Elizabeth Omori, NT News. 
The Federal Ministry of Health is intensifying efforts to improve the quality of health care development to meet international standards. Minister of Health Dr. Osage Ihaniri stated this while inaugurating developmental projects executed by the Usman Damfodio University Teaching Hospital in Sakoto. Shehu Muhammad Dati. In the project, Minister of Health Dr. Osage Ihaniri said the projects will increase capacity to deliver high quality health care services to patients, which will increase the confidence of the citizens in the health care system in the country. He said the Federal Executive Council in 2001 granted approval for the construction, procurement, and installation of a linear acceleration and magnetic resonance imaging machine for the hospital to improve diagnostic and management of cancer neurosurgery and orthopedic cases among others. The government is also monitoring the outbreak of monkeypox, which is causing anxiety around the world. We are making an effort to enlighten the public disease and how to prevent its spread. Chairman Board of Management Usman Umfe University Teaching Hospital in Sokoto, Osaro Ida, described the projects as monumental achievements recorded in the history of the hospital. The Chief Medical Director of the hospital, Professor Anas Ahmed Saber, pressed the formation of the hospital to 33 years ago, saying these projects mark another milestone in improving the quality of its healthcare delivery. It is our hope that the provision of these projects will improve the services and reduce medical tourism within and outside Nigeria. Governor Amin Waziri Tambul, represented by Sokoto State Commissioner for Health, Muhammad Ali Enami, said the state government, in its effort to provide sound healthcare delivery to the citizens, constructed an advanced diagnosis center at the Sokoto State University Teaching Hospital and a contributory health scheme management agency, among others. Representatives of Sultan of Sokoto, Alajika Biruchigari, Sarkin Sudan of Vunu, commended the management for a remarkable achievement worthy of emulation. In Sokoto, Shio Muhammad Dati, NTN News. The National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, in collaboration with Ondo State Emergency Management Agency, SEMA, have distributed medical consumables for the treatment of victims of a war church gun attack. Ayodhi Oloron Diary reports that the medical items were distributed to the Federal Medical Center and St. Louis Catholic Hospital, both in Owo, Ondo State. The medical consumables distributed include intravenous infusion, surgical gloves, examination gloves, flagell, dextrose and dextram among others. Taking delivery of the medical items, Chief Medical Director, FMC Owo, and the Hospital Administrator, St. Louis Catholic Hospital Owo, say the items will go a long way in stabilizing the victims of the attack. All the patients, they are stable now, apart from those of them that are brought in dead. Some of them still require further uh, operation, which is uh, what we are doing now. We are very grateful for the supply. It is indeed very kind and general. It will help us and it will help the patients greatly. We came here to assess this uh, disaster on uh, Sunday. Uh, we sent a report to Abuja and uh, the head of his expeditiously considered the request to help in the treatment of the victim so that uh, they can up quickly and uh, come back to life. We are here purposely to deliver directly to the chief medical director here uh, medical equipment that were given from the federal government in conjunction with the state government in order to ameliorate the conditions, the medical conditions of uh, the victims. Some unknown government recently attacked St. Francis Catholic Church or war and left about 40 people dead while several others sustained varying degree of injuries from Owo. Kayode Olonudari, NTN. And Mina is standing by in Enugu with reports on World Blood Donor Day and other events. Good evening, Mina. Good evening to you, Ayo DJ. You're welcome to Enugu Network Center. 14th of June every year is set aside by the World Health Organization as World Blood Donor Day to, among other things, raise awareness on the need for safe blood and blood products and to thank blood donors for their voluntary life-saving gesture. Chinewoye reports that the theme for the 
birthday celebration is blood donation is an act of solidarity join the efforts and save lives the theme of this year's celebration this voluntary blood donors and save blood donation as a life-saving act of solidarity and that is why they are making these efforts to save lives with me here is mr aneke atonam how do you feel well, I feel good. Voluntary uh, blood donation is uh, one of the many acts of social uh, service, contributing to the good of the society, helping to save lives. It makes you feel good one way or the other. You are helping to save their lives. It's not only men that donate, females also. It's me here is Uche Achara. She says she has donated for over 15 times now. Very, very okay, and I like the fact that I actually love doing because this is really back to humanity and helping, helping to save life in the way I can. We have challenges. The first one is awareness. People don't know that there are where blood, where people donate blood. Blood will be in every bank, especially all the centers in the states. When you donate blood, one, it also helps the bone marrow. And it's like exercising your body because you donate blood, you reduce the volume and allow the bone marrow to produce more blood for replacement. You've heard it from the medical experts. If only one knows the importance of blood donation, I don't think anyone will hesitate because the Enugu State Justice Reform Team have presented draft copies of some amended laws of state to the chief law officer of the state, Melitus Eze Kafarim, who was at a courtesy visit, also reports that the reform team led by facilitator Justina Oyasan has successfully amended this law ready for legislative action. Administration of Criminal Justice Law Draft Amendment 2017, the Criminal Code Law Draft and the Magistrate Court Draft. These three pieces of legislation enjoy preeminent importance in their use and application in justice delivery, both at grassroots and higher societal level. And the team facilitator says it is a fact that a higher percentage of the cases which come to court in the state are handled at the magistrate court. In like manner, the interface of greater proportion of the populace with the law occur under administration of criminal justice. In depth, identified the great need of having an updated functional versions of these laws which meet the demands and priorities of present time and the immediate future. Having successfully amended this law ready for legislative action, the team facilitator Justina Ophia San presented the draft copies to the Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice, Nugu State. Responding, the Attorney General congratulated the move and assured of immediate steps to submit the revised documents to the House of Assembly. Uh, they have made a request that I sponsor it as an executive bill. The steps have started. When passed into law, Revised document will repeal some colonial provisions that have no current practical significance in Enugu Comfort AIM NT News. Remember, you can follow this news broadcast live on our social media handle. Twitter is at NTA News Now. Our Facebook page is at NTA Network News. And our YouTube channel at NTA Live. We'll take another break here. Nationwide will continue with Ayo in Abuja after this break. Thanks for staying tuned. Nigerian pilgrims in Saudi Arabia are being provided with cards that will help them to easily locate their accommodation while in the Holy Land. The report. <laughs> You don't need to take ties. The last one you have to take care of your valuable things, especially your PTA. Nakon officials providing first hand tips and security cushion to Nigerian pilgrims who have arrived Saudi Arabia for the 2020 patch. 
the card provided to the pilgrims contains the pilgrims hotel name location room number and number of persons occupying the room for easy identification and tracing in case of any eventuality in case one misses way mm. anybody you show they will bring you here it's contained the address of this hotel another initiative is the transportation of pilgrims luggage after boarding the flight from nigeria which is delivered to the hotels of the pilgrims this is to ensure comfort safety and protection of nigerian pilgrims from people with questionable character meanwhile the lift of nigerian pilgrims to saudi arabia continues so far over 2000 pilgrims from nigeria have arrived medina with osun state pilgrims been the latest from medina in saudi arabia yusuf umar nta news time now to join olumide egmontola for sports updates and that's nationwide. We thank you for watching. I'm Ayo Deji Makinde. Please remember to connect with the NCA and stand against rape and rapists. On behalf of the entire production crew, good evening.